What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered if you could do letterpress work in Affinity Designer? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're looking at letterpress work. I wanna see if I can duplicate a design done by one of my favorite letterpress artists, Gingerly Press on Instagram. Now, Gingerly Press does all of her work through the physical medium of letterpress. She creates her own letterpress art by first creating the form that she will use and then actually inking it and creating a limited run of prints. And they're just beautiful. And they normally have some kind of message behind them. And she explains her process on the website, which is awesome. And I love letterpress work, but I don't have access to a letterpress myself. And so I can't create it with actual ink and presses. So we wanna see if we can create something similar in Affinity. Now I've done some letterpress work in Affinity Designer before, um, specifically with letters, but Gingerly Press uses, you know, shapes that she creates out of different things. And we're looking at her torn paper set here. So we're gonna try and create something like this. And I do need to give a shout out, of course, to Spoon Graphics, who I've referenced before on this channel. That's a great YouTube channel and it focuses on Adobe programs, but the methods that we're able to learn there, we can often apply with some tweaks in the Affinity program. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing to try and recreate letterpress effect after we kind of get the shapes laid out is due to tutorials I've learned from Spoon Graphics. So we're going to try this and we're going to see how close we can get. You can never really completely duplicate something that's done in a physical medium in a digital medium, right? But you can try and get similar in style and vibe. So let's go ahead and try this. Of course, the copyright for this work that we are trying to duplicate or copy belongs to Gingerly Press and we would never sell something like this. We're just using it as a creative exercise to see if we can recreate this kind of style. And we're going to have to rely a lot on different effects and textures to be able to do this, which is what makes Affinity a really great place to do this because we can go ahead and work in Publisher with all of the tools of Designer and then when we need the tools of Affinity Photo, we can hop in there and get that too because these programs work so well together through Studio Link. So let's go ahead and let's try this. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so here we are on the Gingerly Press website and this is the Torn Earth Collection and this is the making of page where she talks about some of her processes and how she went about doing it. So you can kind of see here some of this collection and as we scroll down, she talks more about her process. Specifically, when we get down here, you'll see that she talks about how she tore this paper to create this effect and then built blocks out of it in order to be able to print out the artwork. So that's kind of the process that she went through and we need to be able to duplicate that kind of texture in our work in Affinity. So let's go ahead and click shop the collection so we can find the one that we want to do. And let's see, so I've already done this one here, this torn earth shifting slopes print. I, that was the one that I first tested this on to see how it works. And now we're looking at this new horizons rise print. So we're going to take this one and we want to grab a screenshot of it. And we also want to note how large it is. So it's a six by eight. And so we'll make our document six by eight as well. So we can try and match it and then command shift four to take a screenshot. We're just going to grab a screenshot of the artwork here that we can put into our document. Now let's go ahead and go to Affinity Publisher and we can look at the example and then we can start to make this. Okay, so here we are and this is the example one that I did previously. And you can see of course that it is not an exact duplicate of what Gingerly Press created. It's a little bit different in terms of the textures especially and also a little bit of the shape because you can't duplicate things exactly. And even each of these prints that are done on an actual printer are gonna be slightly different in terms of their texture and kind of how the ink is distributed. So each one is going to be unique. So ours won't look exactly the same and that's okay. We don't need to do an exact, but we want to kind of duplicate the style here. That's what we're trying to see. So let's go ahead and we'll make a new document. And we're going to do a custom document that is six by eight. So let's go ahead and make that now. Six by eight. We'll make sure ours are in inches. We do not want facing pages. 
we will probably use multiple pages as we kind of build this out. So we don't want them to be facing each other. We just want a single page. And then we don't really need margins, but we can see in the picture that there are significant margins on the page itself. So we'll leave one inch margins in place and then we can increase those later if we need to. So let's go ahead and click create. That's probably pretty good in terms of mimicking where the location of her actual print was. Let's go ahead and bring in the picture. So we're going to just go ahead and place an image. I'm going to place it off to the side here so that we can reference it. Okay, and as far as duplicating this actual work goes, we want to really build up shapes here, which is what you almost always want to do when you're working with vector art is build up your shapes. So we'll be looking at this. We're going to do it all in grayscale first, and then we'll go ahead and bring in the color later. So first shapes, then color and texture later. So let's go ahead and we want to make half a circle. So we're just going to make one circle. There are multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and go right kind of to the middle here and draw out from the center holding down command and make it a perfect circle by holding down shift. And we're just going to drag that out till we've got it in the right spot. Now, of course, we're going to need to cut off the second half of this circle because she only has half of a circle here. So let's go ahead and grab a rectangle and we're just going to make our rectangle for our circle. Select them both with the move tool and then hold down shift to select them both. Then we're going to need to go into the designer persona here so that we have our geometry tools up here and we're just going to subtract. And now we have just our half a circle. Now, if we'd been doing something more complicated than just making half a circle, we probably would have duplicated that shape so that we could do it again later, but half a circle is pretty easy to do. The next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and draw out just a circle. I'm just staying in designer persona because I don't have a reason to go back into publisher persona. I'm going to draw out the sun shape here. Try and place that in about the correct spot. Again, this won't be an exact duplicate, but we want to get as close as we can. And then let's do the rectangle down at the bottom. Just starting with the ones that I think are easiest here. I'm going to go ahead and change the color up here in my swatches just to something so that I can see the difference. We want to make sure we get the stacking order correct so you can kind of see how these have blended together based on where they've been printed. We want to duplicate that. So I'm going to drag this one down to the bottom here because it looks like it's beneath this other one. And now we need three of these over on the side. So we're going to need to shrink this. So let's go ahead and just change our opacity on our half circle so that we can see what we're working with. We made this one too long. So let's go ahead and drag it back. And just making sure that I line that up. Now we, of course, have the advantage of alignment tools. We don't have to use furniture to try and hold all of our printing blocks in place, which is a nice thing from working digitally. Now this one here, this purplish one, is going to present a little bit of difficulty because it is very kind of organic and ragged along the top. And we're working with vector, so that's going to be a little bit harder to do. So let's go ahead and start with a rectangle because that's going to be the right base shape to start with. And we're going to try and go out to about the right size. And then we're going to have to maneuver this somehow. Now we can try and do it either with a texture or we can try and do it by actually changing the points of the vector shape. We're going to have to apply a texture though anyway. So I think it might be easiest to do it with a texture and just kind of mask it out. So we'll try that. And if that doesn't work, we will change the shape later down the road. This one should be on top. So that's good. And then the last things that we need to put into place are these windmills. So it looks like these are triangles with circles and then lines coming off of them. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and we'll start with a triangle. And we're just going to approximate where it should be since we don't have it exact here and then we'll move them later. So these are pretty small. Let's go ahead and make these a different color, of course, just so that they stand out while we're here. And I think I'm just making them too big. So let's make them smaller. Okay, and now we have something that's pretty close to that middle one. And so we can just do some duplication and rotation from the other one. Let's go ahead first and we'll use our corner tool to soften up these corners because these corners are way too sharp for what you would have. 
And just to make sure everything's going to work later, we're going to go ahead and expand the stroke on these lines. Go to Layer and choose Expand Stroke. Okay, and now these are fills instead of strokes. Now, of course, if I wanted to this to be like super close and exact, I could have actually gone and traced each of these objects. And I should probably just group each of these together so that it's easy. So Command G to group, and then we can easily reposition these. Double click in so that you can do individual ones. Okay, and those might be too big, but we can shrink them up later if we need to. And like that, we've laid out the basic shape structure that they have in the original artwork. So before we do any more changes here, as far as adding in color and texture, we are going to go ahead and make a new page. So let's go back to the publisher persona and we're going to right click and we're just going to choose duplicate. That way we always have our grayscale image that we can come back to and adjust if we need to. So let's go ahead and let's just get in the colors before we add in the textures. This is going to be super easy because I am just going to pull the colors from the image directly. So switching to my color panel and having clicked on a shape, I'm going to grab the eyedropper, you click and drag over to pick up a color. Now obviously there's quite a bit of variation going on here because of the different colors that are in there. So let's go ahead and choose a similar color, then we click the eyedropper pool and that will put it in. Now that doesn't look quite dark enough and that is probably because we didn't choose one of the darker patches. So I'm just going to try again. We're going to go for one of the darker patches here. Choose that. And then of course we've set our opacity down so that we could see. So let's go ahead and bring that back up. You might be wondering why, and that's because we are going to adjust the blend mode so that we can actually see through on it. We're not going to use the opacity slider to do the see through there. So let's go ahead and adjust that blend mode now. Go and go here to multiply which seems like that's probably going to be the best choice. If it's not, we can always adjust that later. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is actually go ahead and click this little button right here next to opacity. That's going to change it to a noise slider. We're going to drag our noise up because we want to kind of duplicate that. We're going to add texture in too, but we want to kind of duplicate that variation. So you can see here that now we have some variation going on in our shape. Okay, so we're just bringing that noise slider up. And the further we bring it up, the rougher that variation will be. We can always bring that back down if we need to later as we add in texture. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and do the sun. So same thing, we're going to come over here, click that, and bring up our noise slider. So let's just do all of these. Okay, and I can see that I'm not getting exactly the effect that I want from this blend mode here. So I'm just going to try a couple of different ones. I'm on multiply right now. I'm going to go to overlay, see what I get. No, that's not going to do it. I'm just going to scroll through and just kind of see. I probably do want one of the darkened ones. Multiply might end up being the best one. We might need to introduce some transparency again to get it to come out exactly right. Just going to click this. We'll bring in a little transparency just to better approximate that a little bit. Okay, then we'll go here, do the same thing with this one. Multiply and give us some transparency there. Okay, so you can see we're doing pretty good at establishing kind of the basics here. And now it's time for us to go in and add some texture. So once again, I'm going to duplicate the page so that I just have a backup to fall back on. And you know, that's something that I always like to do. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at how this texture is on here. And we're going to see if we can find a texture in the textures that I own that is kind of similar or can give us a similar effect. So this one is a very like wood grain texture. So we're going to go ahead and try and find a wood grain texture that we can put in here. So in order to do this, I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to say file. Okay, so I'm in my texture place now and the one that I'm going to use is probably going to come from Crumble Crackle Burn, which is a pack from Retro Supply. And so there's a lot and you can see I've just set these to show the thumbnail so that I can kind of see if I have one with kind of a wood grain effect. That one has kind of a wood grain effect, so I'm going to go ahead and click open and I'm going to drag it out to about the right size. Now I can see there is some words coming through on this texture, so I probably don't want to use the whole thing but we might be able to use just the top part here. 
So in order to convert this into a texture, we are actually going to try just rasterizing to mask first and seeing what happens. Okay, so when we do that, we wanna make sure that we're only masking this shape right here. And we've now created a mask. Now the problem with what's happened here is that we've taken away too much. We don't wanna take away that much of it. So there's a couple things we can do. We can try repositioning the texture. Try and get rid of the words because I don't want those showing through. And that's gotten us pretty close there, actually. So that's probably where we want to be with this one. Now, is it a little bit heavier than this one? Yes, it's quite a bit heavier than that one. So there's some things that we can do to try and alleviate that. But for right now, we're going to leave it and we can try something else later if we feel the need to. Moving on, we really need to deal with this big one because that's going to be the hardest texture because we need something that's going to give us this torn paper effect. Let's go ahead and try and place another one and see if we can get something similar. And then we'll probably have to do some cleanup with a brush. If I want to see one closer, I can click on it and push the space bar. Oh, and my kind do it. We'll see what that one looks like. Drag it out. And what you're doing when you rasterize to a mask is you are actually converting your white and your black into the mask. So just remember that black conceals and white reveals. And we're not going to try and get the exact same effect that she had. We're just going to go for something that kind of gives a similar vibe. Of course, we can reposition it after the fact as well. So let's go ahead and let's rasterize this to mask now and see what happens. Obviously, we want to only apply it to the rectangle, so make sure that we clip it in there. And that's not looking too bad. Let's go ahead and adjust our texture a little bit just by moving it. What we're doing is on both of these, we're just getting more than we really want. So let me show you something. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Z, Command Z to get back out of this before we make it into a mask. And then I'm going to apply a threshold adjustment layer to it. So going down to adjustments, I'm going to apply a threshold. What we want is to get a little bit more white out of this. So when we drag this up, you'll see we increase the blackness. So we want to drag it down so we can increase the amount of white that we have because we just don't want quite as much disappearing as we've had. I'm going to get it kind of right there. That helps us to make just a different mask. I'm going to drag this down a little bit more to where we had it before. And now let's rasterize it to mask and see what we get. Clip it in again just by dragging over the thumbnail. And that is looking much better. Let's just try adjusting this a little bit more again to kind of the right spot. And we're getting something that looks very similar. We do need to do a little bit of cleanup over here just with a brush. So let's go ahead and jump into the photo persona. Let's grab our brush tool and let's make sure that we are on black so that we can erase this. Using my bracket keys, I'll just make my brush smaller. Make sure that I am selected on the mask, not on the picture. And I'm just going to brush away some of this. Now the next thing that I wanna do now that I have this kind of in place is just reposition my windmills. Okay, and you can see we are getting something that is looking pretty close to what we had before. And we'll just add in kind of subtle textures to the rest of these using some texture brushes. So I'm going to grab a brush. I'm using Retro Supply Company's Color Lab pens and print defects. You can use anything that kind of gives a defect appearance to your brush. And we're going to mask each of these. And then we're going to brush on what we want to erase. So let's go ahead and select our sun here. And we're just going to make a new mask on it. And currently that mask is blank. It's all white, everything is showing through. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to brush on with some of these defects. Let's try the ink destroyer here. And the ink destroyer just is going to give more of an effect that like this was inked so it's kind of uneven. Let's go ahead and do that. And it's very subtle. It might be hard to see here, but you just kind of want that subtle effect on this. Okay, there are other more ones. So like this is ink damage. So that's the one I'm going to use on these windmills here. So I'm going to go ahead and group them all together and then apply a mask to that group. Okay, we may have gone too far there. So I feel like that's too strong for this one. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch to a gray. 
gray will just make it more subtle than the black will. Go ahead and select this one and try to bring our noise down and see what it looks like with less noise. Okay. Yep, so we'll give it about a mid-level noise there. Good, good. Now let's go ahead and go back to Publisher and just hit our little windshield wiper here to turn on our preview mode and see what the final product would look like. I am pretty pleased with that overall. The one thing that I feel like is not coming through is this color, and I feel like the multiply is just making it too dark. So we might need to go for something that makes it a little lighter. Let's go ahead and choose lighter color. I think that looks a little bit more like it. Lessen our noise a little bit there. And a lot of this is just making adjustments, which is very different than, of course, if we were doing it with letterpress, we could make adjustments, but we'd have to print something new every time. So you can see we've gone through, we've built out shapes, we've applied texture. The one thing that I'm not happy with is this texture on the orange one. I just don't think that that's quite right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and we're going to try another one. It's just not quite subtle enough. So we're going to try another one. And this is the deal with textures is you just have to try them and see what it is. So of course this is a process. This one might work out a little bit better. Okay, I do like where that's going better. That definitely feels more in line with what we have. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's just a couple of other things that we need to do here. So to kind of give it more of a raggedy effect, we're actually going to use a filter. So I've just selected this curve first, and then we're going to go into Photo Persona so that we can get our filters. And filters are right here. They look like little hourglasses. And we are looking for dust and scratches. So right here, down towards the bottom, is dust and scratches. And we just want to kind of watch this and see what effect we get here. It doesn't need to be a lot, but we do want to sort of get this more rounder because it's very hard to get like really hard-edged corners in the letterpress because it's hard to ink all the way to the edge. So we're just kind of trying to give it a little bit more a little bit more of that effect there. And we can do that other places. Come to these guys and we're going to apply that dust and scratches to kind of round them out a little bit. There we go. That makes them look much better. Yep, let's do that on these other ones as well. Okay, I think we might have gone too far on the orange one. So let's go ahead. These are live filters, so you can edit them again later. That's one of the really nice things about working in Affinity is having these live filters. And that, I think, is probably going to do it for us. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this a little bit different kind of tutorial here as we try to duplicate something from the physical medium into the digital medium. And I think we've done a pretty good job using these techniques. Now, obviously, this takes a lot of work, right? This is not a short video and it's not an easy technique to do. You're not just jumping it out and you need a lot of resources like textures and different knowledge of how to make things happen to do this. But it is pretty cool that we can create something like this in the digital space, especially for those of us who don't have access to a print studio. Well, tell me what you think about this, if you like this style of video and if you've learned something from watching it. So I'd love to hear from you. Drop in the comments and let me know. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this video, to give it a big thumbs up. And if you really enjoy my videos, you can click that thanks to leave a little bit of a donation. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.